All right, up next, we are going to look at function transformation. So when I say functions, it could mean several different types. We're going to look at three different types here. Um, and when I graph them, they look different ways. And then transformations, not every graph looks the same. You know that from your history of linear functions that graph a line. They're not all the same steepness. They're not all located at the origin. So we're going to look at those function transformations. It's going to help us answer a lot of questions as we move forward. And it's also one of your standards is identifying the effects um, that certain um, constants and variables have in a function on its graph. So let's review by looking at those parent functions. And I've got them here, three of them. The first one, f of x equals x squared. So anytime you have an exponent of a 2, you're going to have um, what's called a quadratic function. I'm going to go down here to parent function and go ahead and label that. This is a quadratic. And it gets its name from that 2 on the variable. A quadratic graphs that beautiful parabola. So um, 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. This is going to be pretty. And it reflects on both sides, and it looks something like this. It's a very soft U shape. So if you take a uh, piece of string or anything and you bring it in and let gravity just pull on it, that's kind of the U shape that you get. And again, that's called a parabola. And let's look at some other features of our quadratics, the domain. So domain is all your x values. So how far left and how far right on the x axis would this graph go if I had to infinity? All the way left, it would go forever, inching all the way out. On the right, it would go forever. So the domain for a quadratic function is all real numbers, or you can use your fancy cursive R, you can write all reals. I know a lot of students come from different places and you all have different ways of writing all real numbers, but our domain is going to go all the way left, all the way right for our x values. Our range, so y. So how low does it go? How high does it go? Well, when I look at my graph, it's not going to go any lower than zero. So I can write for this example, the range is y is all the values greater than or equal to zero. And that's not true for every quadratic. That's just for this parent function, the basic quadratic. And on this one, my vertex is zero, zero. That spot, let me switch colors. That spot right there is our vertex. Let's look at the second one. You've got f of x equals, those are absolute value bars of x. Um, and so that is our absolute value function absolute value function. The absolute value of 0 is 0. Absolute value of 1 is 1. 2 is 2. 3, 4. You get the drift, right? And it's going to be the same on the other side. If you take the absolute value of negative 4, it's positive 4. So you get this very straight V shape. There we go. All right, our domain. How far left, how far right will it go? Forever. This is another all reals. So you can write it however you want range. How low will it go? How high will it go? My y values are going to go up greater than or equal from that zero, which is also my vertex zero, zero again. And, I, and this is just the parent basic al um, absolute value function. And this one, f of x equals the square root of x. This is just a square root function. just like it looks. Square root function, the square root of zero is zero. The square root of four is two. The square root of nine, if I could come out here, it would be three. So it kind of has this sort of shape. Um, the way I remember it is it kind of has the same shape as my square root. It's just a memory device. Domain, how far left will it go? Not any further than zero. How far right will it go? Forever. So domain, we can say all the x values that are greater than or equal to zero. Range is my y values. How low does it go? How high does it go? It's not going to go any lower than zero, but it's going to slowly inch up. If I had forever to graph this, my y values would be greater than or equal to zero because it's going to keep going up. 
Vertex for this one is also zero, zero. So these are just the three basics that we are going to use as we talk about transformation. So if I take a basic quadratic or a basic absolute value or basic square root function, um, how can I shift it? And what does that mean for the functions equation? So changing those parameters of those parent functions produce those transformations on our graph. Based on what else I put in that equation affects the graph. So let's look at our first parameter over here. G of X equals F of X plus K. When you have that plus K at the end, it is going to move your graph up K number of units. If there's a six there, it's going to go up six. Um, if you have minus K at the end, it's going to move it down that many units. You know this from your lines, your linear equations. When you um, added at the end X plus six, your line went up six. That was your new Y intercept. When you subtracted five, it went down five. That was your new Y intercept. Same is going to be true for your parabolas and your absolute value functions. Let's look here at example one. We have F of X equals X squared plus two. So you're going to have that same parabola, but it's been shifted up two units. One, two, your vertex is now going to be here, and you would have that parabola shape. You can make a table, we could plug in values, and we could show that's true. We could use a calculator and graph it and see that that is true. Um, same for absolute value. So example two, f of x equals absolute value of x, then minus three is on the outside. So it's going to go down one, two, three, and it's still going to have that V shape. Now these are vertical, up and down, vertical translations. And we'll look at the next two. So say the third example here, g of x equals f of quantity x minus h. We have minus h on the inside. Now these are backwards. When they're on the inside, they are backwards. So you might see minus h and think, left. It's going to go right. H units. Opposite is true here. The last one, if I have the quantity of X plus H, it's going to go left that many units. H units. Let's look at our examples here. We have F of X equals the quantity of x minus 3 squared. That squared right there tells me I have that quadratic shape, parabola shape. Minus 3 inside is going to shift it right 3 units. 1, 2, 3, and that will be where my vertex is, and I'll have that parabola shape. The last example, absolute value of x plus 2, is going to shift it left 2 places and give us that absolute value V shape. Okay. These are obviously giving us horizontal transformations. And we can combine these. We can go left and up. We can um, do some addition or subtraction inside and then do some addition or subtraction on the outside of our function so that it can do two movements. You can combine these. Let's look at our second page here, some more transformations that we can combine to make more exciting things happen. Um, the top one here on the second page is g of x equals negative f of x. So with that negative in front, you are going to have a reflection across the x-axis. It's going to flip it upside down. So as I look at my examples here, f of x equals a negative x squared. Vertex is still the same, but now it's been flipped across the x-axis. Instead of a smiley face parabola, we have like a frowny face parabola. And same for your absolute value. Now it is a downward V. If your negative is on the inside, it is going to reflect across the y-axis, so mirror side to side. We don't see this one as much. A really, really tricky benchmark question maybe, but not very often. 
So if I have um, the squared there, that tells me a parabola. Now, if it's reflected across the y-axis, it's going to look the same. That's funny. And you know what? Same is true here. When I flip my my y, my absolute value v over the y-axis, it's still going to look the same. So these are obviously our reflection types of transformations. And the last bit, this looks a little crazy, but we're looking at the number or coefficient at the beginning of my function. You can look ahead at our examples here. What if there's a two there or a one half in front? So the top one here says, if that a value is greater than one, so if it's two, five, 17, if it's a large number um, in front, then it is going to stretch it um, vertically. If we have a whole number in front, it's going to give us a vertical stretch. Likewise, if that number in front is, notice it's between zero and one, what does that give us? Fractions, decimals. You want to write that there. Fractions, decimals. If you have a fraction or decimal in front, then it is going to vertically compress it. So think about if you take Play-Doh and you squish it between your hands, what happens? It gets wider. So a lot of students say it gets wider or like a horizontal stretch, but we're going to call it a vertical compression because those are the terms that we see in our testing. Vertical compression. We're going to squish it down. So your first example, f of x equals 2x squared. So the squared tells me the parabola shape, but the 2 is going to stretch it. Um, 0, 0, because 0 squared is 0 times 2 is still 0. Nothing's changed there, but my points are going to be stretched vertically. When I plug in 1, before it was just 1, 1, but now 1 squared is 1 times 2 gives me 2. My ordered pair is 1, 2. So 1, 2. And it's going to reflect. And then let's say 2 is now 8, 2, 8. And it's way up there, so this is going to be much skinnier. Our last example here, f of x equals 1 half absolute value of x. Absolute value bars tell me it's going to be a v-shape. The 1 half is going to cause it to compress, which is going to make it look wider. When I plug in 1, that's going to give me a half. When I plug in 2, that's going to give me 1. Let's do like 4 gives me 2. So as I sketch this, let me go ahead and do 2 is 1. 3, 4 gives me two and it's going to be reflected. Let's see how good I can do. So it's going to look a little bit wider because we've squished it vertically. So these are sometimes referred to as our dilations. Dilations, you may remember that from geometry. All right, so let's put these into play. I mentioned earlier, you can combine these. We can move left and right and up and down and stretch and reflect, and we can do them all. So for each of the functions, identify the parent function, describe the transformation, sketch it without a calculator, identify domain and range and vertex. So number one, g of x equals negative quantity of x minus three squared plus two. So what's the first thing you know? The squared there means it's a quadratic. which means it's going to give me a parabola shape. And then I'm just going to move from left to right. The negative in front means it is reflected across the x-axis. So it's not a smiley face parabola. I know it's an upside down frowny face parabola. This minus 3 inside is going to go right 3 units. And the plus 2 at the end makes it move up two units. So I can, without a calculator, sketch it 
or at least get an image in my mind. If I'm working on a benchmark test, multiple choice, I've got graphs, I can quickly pick out ones that could be the correct graph. So parabola upside down, it is right three, one, two, three, up to one, two. So here should be my vertex. Try to draw a beautiful parabola for you there with our parabola domain. How far left and right will it go? Those edges of our parabola are gonna inch out forever. So that's all real numbers. The range, how high and how low does it go? It's not gonna go any higher than that vertex at two. So it's gonna be all the Y values that are less than or equal to two. And then vertex is what now? Three, two. 3, 2, 3, 2, notice we went right 3 up 2, we had a 3 and a 2. Hmm. Quickly you can look at the equation and see that vertex, right? All right, let's look at number 2, g of x equals 1 half absolute value of x plus 1 minus 3. So what do we know? Well, these absolute value bars right here tell us its absolute value which is gonna graph me a V shape. The one half in front is a fraction or decimal. It's less than one. So it is going to be a compression. It's gonna get squished. So it's gonna look a bit fatter or flatter because it's been squished. We've got plus one on the inside, which makes us go left one. Remember inside, it's backwards of like your number line. And minus three sends us down three units. So let's sketch it. Left one, down three. Here's my new vertex. And it should just be a little bit flatter as you sketch it. Our domain, how far left and how far right will it go? Those arrows are going to keep going forever. All real numbers. Your range. Your y values. How high will it go? How low will it go? Well, it's not going to go any lower than negative three. All my y values are um, greater than or equal to negative three. And our vertex is negative one, negative three. Do you see that again? Negative one, negative three. We went left one, down three, and here negative one, negative three. You could quickly look at the equation and go, okay, opposite sign inside the last number that makes my vertex and you could start graphing from there. You could. Our last couple of questions, just pulling everything together for you to write the function, use the given description to write an equation for each function. Number three, it's a quadratic reflected across the x-axis and translated up four units. What's that going to look like? f of x equals, if it's a quadratic, I've got a squared. I know that much. Reflected across x gives us a negative in front. And then translated up, there's addition at the end, four units to move it up. There you go. Take all those pieces. There are special functions, special um, things that happen in our equation for our function to graph that way. Last one, number four, it's an absolute value function. I'm just going to call this one g of x. So I know there's absolute value bars. It's been vertically stretched by a factor of two. There is a two in front that has stretched this by a factor of two. Each um, output, each y coordinate is by a factor of two. Translated three units left. Now going left and right is opposite, so this should be plus three to make it go left, and then two units down would mean there's subtraction at the end. So you've got a couple of different um, practice topics on Delta Math. Let me show you really quick those. So the first one you're going to see it the title literally says discovery. So it literally means go in there and play. So let me just illustrate that really quick. It says transform the black function to match the dotted function. 
So you can already use what we've talked about in the notes, but this is usually something I would give in class before the lesson, but you can play around with it and really see how it works. So if I'm taking black and putting it on my red dashed or dotted function, I need it to flip, right? So when you put a negative in front, flips it across the x-axis. Look at that. As soon as you change something, it's going to move your graph. So if you know it's wrong, change it back. I started to do this drop down, but that's on the inside. And what does that do? Flips across Y. So that's not what I wanted. And then what? I need it to go up. So I'm going to come over here. How many is it? Five? And just type in five. When you click out of the box, then it will move for you. And it will tell you when you're correct and you can click submit. Isn't that cool? So check that out. Play around with that. That should help solidify um, some of these transformations. So we covered our basic functions, parabolas, absolute values, square roots, and those are the ones you're going to see on Delta Math using these transformations. Again, rewind, play it back. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in class.